So, hello then, can you hear me? Good. My name is Stian Lavik, uh, and I'm the, I'm the director of international markets of Motitech and the director of Motitech UK. Hello, my name is Solfur Saksta. I'm a project manager and account manager at Motitech. Glad to see you. So in Motitech, we are adamant to base our work practice on the principle that humans are equally valuable, independent of age and functional level. That is why we always put the users and their needs first. It's their challenges we wish to solve. We aim to solve problems for real people in a real environment. And we aim to really see and understand our users. And that is both the users, healthcare workers, and the volunteers, as as best teachers to improve. Because we believe that together, we are a collective creative force. We have coined the term motivation technology as a subterm for welfare technology, as we see motivation as the main driver for sustainable change. So we want to find solutions that help people master their own lives longer with feelings of confidence and self-efficacy. And this is our human-centric motivation, and this is what inspires us. Many of the age-related disorders are created by inactivity than more than age itself. And too many people sit still when they come into care homes. The city of Bergen on the west coast of Norway realized this. So in 2012, they launched a project uh, in terms of trying to getting uh, people living in care homes to be more physically active, especially to stimulate people uh, with dementia to increase physical activity. Uh, so they bought 40 indoor exercise bikes uh, for the residents to use. However, they acknowledged that people are people, no matter the age, so they also found that motivation is key. That's why they hired our company to make some video routes of local roads and streets, uh, so they can sit in front of a TV screen with the exercise bike, and it would look like they were outside cycling along the roads. And they would also know the places where they went. Um, so the key is motivation, and that brings us to a great challenge with regard to older people and physical acti activity, namely the motivation. Okay, so we're just gonna do a little exercise. You can discuss with yourself in your head, or with the person next to you. So we want you to think about and acknowledge the first words that pop onto your mind when you read this question. How to motivate people with dementia to be physically active? So we'll give a half minute, see if you want to discuss. Go two and two, or just think about it. Keep it in your mind. So, unfortunately, we don't have any more time for this, even though it's fun and interesting. Uh, so here are some words that might pop up. I don't know if you found any of these words, but uh, you probably have others as well. But let's just keep them in the back of our head as we continue and go through. Uh, and I think we need to acknowledge that the motivation is key to unlock increased physical activity. And we need to work on the motivation part if we want to succeed. So. As I told you, our film team was, was invited to create video concept for this project, local videos. So they had five institutions in uh, Bergen that took part in the project in a trial period. They tested out cycling for persons staying there long term and persons with dementia. So the, the Department for Care Homes in Bergen wanted to see whether increased physical activity would affect behavior and psychological symptoms uh, in relation to dementia. They did a 24-7 um, uh, observation of the behavior, and they entered information into forms. And you can see here is a mapping of some of that data here. It's in, in Norwegian, but still, you have to believe me, that's what it is. Um, and they did this for one month without cycling, and then two months with the cycling. And we'll show you now a brief story from a national TV, uh, TV news channel in Norway from 2013. It's in Norwegian, but it's subtitled. 
So you'll probably understand it, and you'll see the concept also in action, how it worked. Mimmi er på sykkeltur på gamle trakter. For her er lommekjentene med de. Gått på skolen her på Handelskøp. Med muren, vet du. Mens pedalene går stig humøret. Ja. Mimmi, Odni og Dagny bor på Slettemarken sykehjem i Bergen kommune. Flere ganger i veka får de god trening mens de ferdes gjennom Bergens gata. Det er veldig greit. Hvorfor det? Jo, for det er kjekt. Og litt sånn mosjon. Dagny, står det på alle disse arkene her? Ja. Er det du som har syklet alle? Ja. Og det er ikke den også. Hvor var det også? Hvor bak sier du også? Hvor ofte sykler du? To ganger i uken. Og resultatet er gode. Alle kommunens sykehjemmer har tilbudet. Til sammen har de syklet om lag 30 000 kilometer, som er tre fjerdedeler rundt jorda. Gevinsen er sammensatt. Den består av bedre fysisk helse, en mental stimulering som er viktig, og en sosial gevinst i og med at de sitter sammen og snakker om det de ser, og snakker om den som sykler. Til venstre her oppe nå, der kommer vi opp til Bøllevi. Et erverdig restauranthus. Det hadde gjort så mye noe godt nå og noe å drikke. Et lite glass. Ja, jeg vil ikke være så lite forresten. Så du ser Dagny, som tørte de pagene for å se den reporteren proudly hvor langt hun hadde gått. And she actually, actually got a bike from her family on her own room, so she really got into this. And the inhabitants in care homes in Bergen have now circumvented the globe many times over. And the users of Motiview are currently traveling um, more than 60,000 kilometers every month. And that's the distance from the North Cape in Norway to Gibraltar by the Mediterranean Sea. And we see that the videos motivate the users. Persons not wanting to ride a bike for more than five minutes without the video could now go for 40 minutes without even noticing it. And these are the findings that the, the project shared with us and listed up. So as you see here, there was improvement in both appetite and sleep. And they also had the improvement in the general um, contentment and well-being of the individuals that was in the project. They experienced everyday joy and perceived self-efficacy. The recollection of memories was also, of course, increased with the local video routes. And that was important, not only for the users, but also for the families. Additionally, it was inspiring for the staffs and the relatives just to see the residents enjoying themselves and getting healthier. In terms of reduction, there was a reduction in overweight. There was a reduction in the pain, which also led to a reduction in medical usage. And one thing is that aggressive behavior wasn't reduced, but it was eliminated for the users in the project. There also was a reduction in anxiety and distress. And even though people that were wandering about still wandered around, but they didn't fall over because they had increased their strength in their legs and they had better balance. And we heard a lot of good stories from the users uh, from the project. There was an older man one day who got some pains in his leg, and uh, the nurses were worried that it might be a beginning blood clot. And it, it turned out it was actually just his muscle being sore because he wasn't used to the exercise. Another woman at 75 living at a care home called Kultstihagen in Bergen, she had experienced a double hip fracture and after a while, because she was in pain and she didn't want to do any exercise, she didn't understand why she needed to do it, the doctors gave her no hope of rehabilitation. But then she got to use Motiview. And then, by having the auxiliary motor on the bike, she could sit and watch a local video from her childhood memories, and the bike took her legs into activity. And little by little, the blood circulation increased, she got strength back, and then they noticed that after a while, she started using her own legs. 
little by little. And then, suddenly, she could walk. First, with a, what we call a preke stool. I can't remember the name in English, but they have walking. Ah, oh, thank you, that's the word. And then, after a while, she could actually walk without no aid. And this is a woman that the doctor said there was no hope of rehabilitation. So, based on the huge success in the project, the project leads, which you saw earlier, encouraged us to take this out to care homes and elderly throughout the country. And so, we did. With support from Innovation Norway's and other bodies that saw the, this potential, we had established a company, Motitech, in Norway in 2013. And we have launched the video cycling concept under the name Motiview. So currently we have about 240 installations uh, in care homes and adult daycare centers in the Nordic countries, and Norway, Sweden, Denmark and Iceland, and we estimate an impact on about 7,000 older people and people with dementia using this uh, currently. And we're working our way now into England, Canada and other countries are lining up wanting to join. So we have a vision that you can see here, turning older people and people with dementia into dedicated athletes may sound a bit cheesy, but we actually believe in it because of what we've seen. So when you notice Dagny and how, her dedication, we've seen many, many people like that uh, in our community. And uh, we see a dedication and a stamina that impress us. <coughs> we think this is wonderful, though. We're really enjoying uh, and, and rejoicing with the users, the relatives and the healthcare workers, and we're happy to relay the stories further on. So the woman in this picture, she had far progressed dementia and could not make herself understood. But when her feet were placed in front of the bike, she started pedaling intensively. Her legs were going like this. And the staff was thinking, is something wrong with the bike? Is the accelerating going maybe in a too fast pace? But it turns out that she was a young girl. She has done a lot of cycling. So her cycling reflexes still were intact. So she just pedaled along at an immense and we've also seen great benefits from Motiview on a mental and a cognitive level. Uh, during a demonstration of Motiview, there was a patient with dementia walking uneasily around the hallways searching for his room. Uh, as some of the patients were invited to try Motiview towards the end of the demo, this man was placed in front of the bike. He was originally from the city of Trondheim, and therefore he was watching video from his hometown. From the first minute, he guided the audience from street to street with confidence and a clear voice. A man standing next to him started crying, saying, this is my friend, we grew up together, and I knew him before he got dementia. I would never be able to guide you through the streets of Trondheim as he just did. And then at a care home uh, in the south of Denmark, uh, there was a man who'd lost his language to dementia, and uh, once as he was cycling to Motiview, he recognized his whereabouts, and suddenly he exclaimed, just down this road, we're coming to the hot dog booth. And so they did. So his experience had actually triggered his language for a brief moment, and it was a thrilling experience for those who stood next to him. And we hear many stories of the same sort, uh, both from a physical <coughs> and a cognitive perspective. But our vision is much bigger than just selling a project, because we want to be a game changer in healthcare. And we are growing into it. We now want to show you how Motiview can also be used in regards to a social setting. This short clip is a, is a video from Glittere Care Home in, um, in Kongsberg, from Norway. And I want you to know how they are on it together. They sit together, some are doing it in cycling, while others are sitting around, listening to the music, watching the videos, and singing along. The quality isn't that good, but it's from one of the staff. It's typical Norwegian folk music. She's asking, this is your third time today, isn't it? So she's his third time mm -hmm. going on the bike and he's watching them. Through. 
Her sitter resten av trimdamene og ser på. This is the rest of the exercise women. Exercising women team. To really be a game changer in healthcare, we need to facilitate for the community of supporters to grow. Because we know that it's not really up to us, it's up to you, it's up to the healthcare workers, it's up to volunteers, relatives and others to help people and people with dementia uh, to improve their quality of life. That is why we're continuously building a network for key personnel to interact, share stories and ideas and help each other out. We currently have 10,000 followers on our Nordic Facebook page. Uh, and we're using this platform and the social media to uh, interact and to share. And we'll continue to grow our community platform also with a gr global uh, perspective. So in March uh, 2017, we held our first motivation conference, as we called it, in Bergen, Norway, where it all started, um, where we gathered healthcare workers from Norway and Sweden to inspire and motivate, to share stories and experiences and so on. And it was a tremendous success. So we did it again this year. Uh, and we're prepared to turn this, turn this annual uh, conference into an international happening. And there are many great things popping up of the community. Some care homes are agreeing on going traveling. That is, that they want to travel to a certain destination. And then, as the residents get there, like the cycle, a certain amount of kilometers, they celebrate. One care home wanted to go to Copenhagen, go to Copenhagen in Denmark. So they measured up the kilometers to reach there, and when they finally made it, they celebrated with red Danish hot dogs for dinner. And then they moved on to Spain, and then they had tapas. Other places have also agreed on having local competitions among themselves, in, among the residents, or between care homes, local care homes in the community. And so the list goes on. But I want you to know that this is not our ideas. This comes from the community. The residents have some ideas, healthcare workers, volunteers, relatives, and so on. So what we do, as Lestia said, we just share the ideas because we want to share the knowledge, what works and what doesn't. And then we had a very special case of this, and the picture is from that, uh, in the city of Arendal at the south coast of Norway, uh, they figured out that they needed more manpower to help people and the residents to the bikes. So they recruited refugees coming to Norway uh, that needed language training and work training. So they came into the care homes, helped the residents to the bike, and then they sat down talking to them. So they got their language training as well. And that was a great idea and it was a win-win situation. So the social services started to pay for the refugees and organize for them to come into the care homes. So it's sort of um, both was gaining from it. And some of these people, you can see here, um, they actually were so interested in this that they started on their healthcare worker education after being a while in the care homes. So what we did was actually we shared this story through our network and on the motivation conference, so the idea spread. So now in the city of Bergen, they started the same thing, where they've now actually hired the first cycle host uh, coordinator for this kind of work and on an even larger scale than what they did initially. And there's no reason why it should stop there. So, um, as Sulfur mentioned, none of these were our ideas, but they were coming from the community and we only shared them. Uh, and this is how we like it. So, we have learned a lot from the community about what works and what is important to successfully when using Motiview. So, the most important thing we see and that the community tells us is the stuff. Because stuff is crucial for success. Stuff is crucial to motivate and facilitate the users. Because you know your residents and you know their motivation. Another thing is also when implementing MotiV is also uh, the daily routine. Because if you get it into the daily routine, both the staff and the users get used to using it. And where we have seen the greatest success is also where the, co the, sorry, the staff get to cooperate um, across disciplines. Sorry. 
that is nurses, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, and so on. And also, we have, mustn't forget the volunteers and the relatives, because they can be an enormous support team for the users. And as we mentioned, the local projects like going to Denmark or Spain has also shown important for the residents when using MotiView. So what about MotiView itself? As it started out in the project in Bergen, we had four local video routes. Uh, they uh, got tired of the four video routes after a while. Uh, so the focus of the entire system here is the users and their experiences while using it. It is easy to use the system. It's not advanced in terms of buttons and choices, but it's enough to effectively navigate. And for every new customer, we travel out there and create a local video in cooperation with them. Because we deem it important that the users can exercise to watching videos from familiar places where they have their memories. For the same reason, we're always including access to the entire video library uh, to all uh, who has a license. Uh, since we don't want to limit the users, the possibilities of collect recollecting memories, we don't know where their memories might originate. So today we have a video library consisting of more than 1,200 videos from 23 countries, and it's growing by several hundred every year. At the moment we're planning a massive filming here in England, uh, and we'll have 130 videos from England this spring. And we have music, soundtracks, as you heard and saw in the film, uh, we are cooperating with a Norwegian company called Beat, and they're carrying more than 8.5 million songs. So we have theme-based playlists like music from the 60s, music from the 70s, and so on. And we developed it in cooperation with a music <coughs> therapist. So as we built the library, we keep on learning a lot from our users. For instance, in the beginning, the pace of the movie was going a, li a little bit too fast. We got feedback from the users that some of them got a bit dizzy and well when watching the videos, so we adjusted accordingly. And another time we came across some footage that we thought was pretty boring. It was uh, some forest and a road and that's it for a long time. So we figured we need to edit this out. But luckily before we did that, we showed that footage to this woman, Inge, uh, and she took a look at it and suddenly in the middle of nowhere she started telling her story because many years ago, she'd been walking there with her children. And then they encountered this, a viper snake. Uh, and then she said to her children, you know, stay back, and I'm going to get a stick and kill this snake. And so she did. Then a truck driver came along, and he had witnessed the entire thing. So he saw the woman and her children there. So he stepped out of his truck, and he said, oh, stand back, mom, and I'm going to kill the snake again. <laughs> so that was kind of a happy memory for Inga to remember. And it happened at a place that we thought might be boring. <coughs> so we learned a lot from that, because it's not our memories that's important. It's the user's memories. So needless to say, we did not edit that part out. Uh, and we learned a lot, and it, it's going to stay with us. And this is why when we get a phone call, or if we get a phone call from uh, healthcare workers that's saying that this video is boring, or this and that need to be taken out or edited, we always ask, is this your opinion or is it the opinion of the users? Because we truly want the users to be in focus. It's them we are doing this for. And this is also why that we go, don't go into the temptation of using high-tech features. This is our lesson learned through growing. You know the high-tech like VR glasses, Stimplay, you probably tested them, I have. They're a, Cool, I'll admit that. But what we have seen, and others agree as well, that in the long run, this might be a bit too high tech for all the people, and especially people with dementia. So what we experienced was they needed videos of high quality, feeling safe and steadily, taking them in a good pace through the city. And that's all, because that's safe for them. So let's take a look from some, some sample videos from the MotiView library. So now you're the cyclist, so you can start pedaling where you are and uh, kick back and relax. <laughs>
Recently, even the royals have discovered how much fun motive you can be. The Duke of Cambridge tried it, using it on a trip to Oslo a few weeks ago. And we prepared it for him in the same manner as we do for all the residents in the care homes. We went to a place where we knew he had some memories, St. Andrews, where he studied and met Kate. And then we created a local video for him. And then we found some of his favorite music and added as a soundtrack. And this is how the story goes. He loved it, as do many people when they see familiar places and music that they like. So as he cycled along, he get a typical expression that we also hear in care homes a lot. Oh, you filmed my room, or you filmed my house, or things like that. And this is how the Duke and Duchess reacted as we put on the song from their first dance at the wedding. If you don't know, the song was Your Song by Ellie Golding. And as you can see, this created a nice moment, a moment of reminiscence for them as she went over and laid her hand on her husband's shoulder. So, some of you might have seen this document. It's the new uh, industrial strategy for the United Kingdom. And the aging society is identified as one of the four grand challenges for the future. And we would very much like to help in this picture. We all know that physical inactivity is a major cause for deteriorating health, especially among older people. Obviously, this increases the cost of health and social care for the society as a whole. Which leads to the conclusion that being physically active and hence staying healthier is good medicine for the economic year as well as for the individuals. Both in the government's strategy, Sporting Future, a new strategy for an active nation, and in Sport England's strategy towards an active nation, tackling inactivity is a major priority, which will impact the five identified key outcomes which are listed here. So we're currently doing a project here in England, funded by Sport England's Active Aging Fund, uh, and we have established Motitech UK here in London. And the main aim for the fund, as well as for the project, is to tackle inactivity among older people, and for our part, focusing on people living in care homes and using adult daycare centers. We base our project on the two beliefs that with the right motivation, we can reduce inactivity, and that the support and the supporters of the cyclists are crucial for success. So here are listed the main goals for the project. Of course, we want to see an increased physical and mental well-being. We want to reduce the inactivity by allowing people to bicycle to videos from familiar routes and childhood memories. We aim to impact a minimum of 360 older people aged 55 plus with physical activity for a minimum of 30 minutes per week. We also want to see that the users are continuing to be physical active after the project, hence creating sustainable behavior. And of course, we want to see a growing MotiView community after the project as well. The project design. So, in the project, 24 sites get to test out MotiView. The project will run for two and a half years. It started back in October last year and will end in December 2020. We will do it in that eight simultaneous sites are doing, trying out the MotiView and they have it for three months each. As we said, staff is crucial. So training and close follow up of each site is important, both for them, but also for us. And we will do evaluation at each site at zero, three, <laughs> six, and 12 months after starts. And we will measure both physical activity and physical and mental well-being. And we expect to learn a lot uh, from this project, from the cooperating partners, and also from the evaluation. And what is equally important to us is to share what we learn uh, the way we've always done it, we want to build and grow the community. 
So we'll be talking about it on seminars like this, and we'll also share on the web and via social media. So already this year, we're planning to go to this conference, obviously, and then uh, next week, we're going to Nadex in Birmingham, and also Y Sports in October, and Care England in November. So it's important for us to share and to learn all the way. So let's do some playing with numbers, just to use hip fractures as an example. We know that physical inactivity increases frailty, and that higher the frailty, the more likely that any fall will cause a serious injury, like a hip fracture. Unfortunately, most of the residents in care homes are not very physically active, especially those suffering from dementia. That is most likely one of the reasons why people living in care homes are three times more likely to fall than people living in their own homes, and 10 times more likely to suffer from a hip fracture if they fall. According to Age UK, there are about 421,000 residents in care homes in the UK. 76,000 people had a hip fracture in 2010, and the number is expecting to increase. According to National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, 30% of all patients with a hip fracture admitted to hospitals live in care homes. And as we know, many of these have dementia. This means that based on the number from 2010, roughly 23,000 persons from care homes experience a hip fracture every year. Now, the estimated annual cost of hip fracture in the UK is about 2.3 billion pounds a year. This means that if we could reduce the number of falls in care homes, the community would most likely save a lot of money. So let's say that we're able to increase the level of physical activity and hence strengthen leg muscles and improve balance for a meager 5% of the care home residents. Of those, about 5.4% 4, would, according to statistics, experience a hip fracture, especially if they remained inactive. Now, there is much research pointing to physical activity preventing falls and resulting injuries. So if we're able to prevent only 50% of these hip fractures by increasing the physical activity, and then observations suggest that it will be significantly higher than 50%, a conservative estimate for the cost savings for the community with these numbers would be around 17 million pounds every year. Please note that this is simply playing around with numbers and only with regards to hip fractures. So our experience with motor viewing care homes suggests that the cost savings quite likely would be higher for hip fracture than what's shown here, and that physical activity would most likely save costs in other areas too, like medicine usage and need for care personnel, etc. Last autumn, we had the Road Worlds Championship in Bergen, Norway. We became an official partner with the championship, and we did, you guessed it, Road Worlds for seniors. So all with a Mountain View license were allowed to participate, and we focused on physical activity and mental and social well-being. We crowned a male world champion, a female world champion, and also the best team. And of course, there was a prize for the best support team as well. It was a tremendous success. 1,100 participants from care homes in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, and Canada cycled 30,000 kilometers in six weeks. That's more than the distance from Aberdeen to Cape Town and back. What we did, we sent out some t-shirts, some caps, uh, we had some knitting recipes, uh, we had stickers, and some uh, posters focusing on some more um, serious topics for physical activity and health. Uh, and there was a lot of festivity um, uh, around these countries that participated. So here are some pictures. Uh, you know, they had uh, the mayor coming, cutting the ribbon for starting the championship. Uh, they had a lot of flags and music and balloons and everything. There's a picture from Denmark, training intensely together with some from the staff or relative. At the upper left corner, there's a picture from Germany where they actually made their own championship room with several flags and trophies on the tables and really inspiring for the users. So, why the role was for seniors? Well, we wanted to increase the focus and attention on physical activity among all the people, especially those living in care homes. And it worked. 
During the competition, there were over 40 news stories from TV, radio, newspapers, both in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Canada, and Germany. And the tips didn't come from us. It came from the community because there was a lot of attention. We want to show you one of them. This is from the CTV News in Toronto, Canada. An international sporting competition has taken over health facilities in Markham. It's for an event called Road Worlds for Elderly and has been pitting Canadian seniors against others across the planet. CTV's Pauline Chan reports. They're not so fast when they're walking into the room, but when they get going... <laughs> Sophie the Chihuahua offers some four-legged encouragement. 25 seniors from Memory and Company in Markham have been racing against Golden Agers in more than a dozen other countries. What's the toughest part of the competition? Pedaling. <laughs> <laughs> I love cycling. I come from the Netherlands and that's where everybody still cycles. And uh, that's the first thing that we learned in the family, you know, cycle. You didn't have motorbikes yet. People tend to forget that the elderly need exercise too. That's why Memory and Company likes to emphasize programs like MotiView. It's a virtual reality program that creates the sense that you're moving as you pedal. This actually started in Norway, so this MotiView was created in Norway and the finish line was in their country. And while crossing the finish line for the Road Worlds for Elderly event took only 20 minutes, the usual cycling sessions last an hour, with some seniors coming in five days a week. Are you able to speak or are you out of breath yet? No, I, I, I can speak. I, I am very rarely not speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Adams is a fan of Mode of You. It's a very good idea. It gets people on the road and it gets them enjoying it. They may swear more often, than dead, but, but I think it's a very good idea. And while the humans have been doing all the legwork, at the end of the race, it's little Sophie who is tuckered out. Pauline Chan, CTV News. Oh. So we actually aim for this, to become the world's largest sporting event. And we think it's very possible. There is a lot of people around the world in care homes and adult daycare centers. This year, the Road World Championship is going in Austria. Next year, it's going in Yorkshire. So we're going to do a build-up towards next autumn, where the Road World Championship will be here. And that's also in the final stages of our project with Sport England. We aim to have 3,000 participants from around the world this, week, uh, this, uh, this year, and it will be a four weeks competition. And hopefully, it'll get a lot of attention on physical activity among older people this year and next year as well. So that's about it from us. Um, but we don't want you to keep calm. We want you to keep active and pedal on. And just at the end, we would just want to say that we love to talk to people who see the potential in MoTV as a way of tackling inactivity among their elderly. So we're here today. We are free tomorrow or any day, really. So hope you get in touch. And thank you for listening.